So the book starts off with this review about energy resources, then moves on to um, describe uh, a whole series of different types of rocks that occur um, naturally, which may be host to uh, hydrocarbon resources. And it, it talks about um, turbidite rocks, which are formed in sedimentary basins, um, looks at um, some carbonate rocks, um, looks at um, aeolian deposits, which are basically produced by windblown sand, and um, also fluvial deposits, and talks about some of the very complex structures you see in, in fluvial um, rocks. And then the, the book really starts talking about how you can model effective flow properties in these different types of formation. And uh, using quite simple um, analytical mathematical approaches. And um, once we've understood that, it, it goes on to talk about some of the challenges of using these models to describe the flow of fluids um, through, through the rocks, mainly because the complexity of the rock means there's always some uncertainty in trying to describe in detail the, the quantitative um, st structure or rock structure through which the fluid is moving. So a lot of the carbon dioxide produced from um, burning fossil fuels can be captured and in principle it could be um, sequestered either in depleted oil and gas reservoirs or in other deep saline aquifers and so a number of the fluid mechanical challenges about sequestering CO2 are, are described. Um, again building from the models of um, the, the complexity of rocks and looking at some of the ways in which that CO2 may spread through the subsurface and um, it looks at how it displaces water, how capillary effects may cause trapping of the, the, the CO2 as it, as it migrates. Um, and then there's a fascinating range of uh, problems whereby if you're injecting water with one temperature and one composition into an aquifer which has uh, water of different composition and different temperature, there may be very large density differences that can drive a range of flows. And because the, the temperature um, signal moving through a, a rock travels at a different speed from the fluid itself because the temperature is heating up the, the grains in the rock whereas the fluid is just moving through the, the gaps between the grains um, you can actually start um, decoupling the temperature and compositional signal and this leads to a, a section looking at some of the reactions that occur and some of the, the effects whereby fluids may start off less dense than the water in the system but may become more dense and, and this can lead to some very curious effects. So th and, then, and then the book looks at gas production and um, some of the problems associated with recovering gas from um, uh, different types of rock and particularly um, some of the modern challenges associated with very low permeability rocks that are um, through which the gas moves very slowly and ultimately looking at issues with um, shale gas and how you might go about trying to recover some of the gas from those, those systems. Um, and then. I guess the other area on thermal energy um, is that a lot of power stations produce a lot of excess heat and there's interest nowadays in trying to see if we can capture that heat and store that underground in the summer and then recover it in the winter. And so there's some, some discussion in the book about the problems of thermal energy storage in aquifers um, where on an annual cycle you'll pump in and extract the thermal energy and looking at how that, again, how that might work on, on a long time scale.